Hey everyone, and welcome to Learning Ableton from Scratch. My name is Armand, and I'm a Toronto-based Deep and Progressive House DJ and producer. And so far, this YouTube channel has been filled with tutorial lessons to teach you DJing in terms of the technical skills of DJing, and also the business side of DJing, in terms of how to go out there and market yourself and get gigs. Some of you have expressed interest in learning how to produce music in Ableton or other digital uh, studios. So I'm going to uh, do a series of these videos and lessons for you. And in doing so, I'm going to assume that you've got absolutely zero experience uh, in music production or digital studio environments. So hence the name, Learning Ableton from Scratch. Now I've got to say, I'm no expert, but I've learned Ableton enough to be able to produce some songs and uh, songs that are you know decent. I'm not 100% happy with them. I think in a couple more years, I'll be a little more happy with where I'm at. But I think I've learned enough to help share my skills in terms of being able to go from zero to at least being able to produce songs. So I'm going to assume that you've never used one of these programs ever before. And so uh, in each week, we're gonna post a new video teaching you a new production skill. And we're also not only gonna to touch on the technical skills of Ableton, we're also going to go through some compositional basics in terms of how to put together and compose electronic music. So today's session will be a little bit on the longer side, so bear with me. Reason for that is we've gotta learn how to navigate the software. Ableton is uh, a quite powerful software and if you don't have anyone helping you learn it along the way, like I did, it can be quite daunting and quite uh, frustrating to even navigate around in the software. I certainly had some challenges with that, although I did have a little bit of a leg up because I had come from using another software before called Reason. So today, we're gonna to look at four different main areas of Reason, and those include the session view or mixer view, uh, the arrangement view, where you go and write out your actual sequence of your song, uh, third is going to be the sound banks where all of the sounds and samples and music are actually stored. And number four is going to be the instrument and audio effects chain where you actually chain and link together your instruments, your synthesizers, and then any audio effects you're going to add on them to tweak the sound, such as reverb or an echo, for example. So uh, by the end of this session, we will actually get into some of the fun stuff. We will actually start programming and writing in some drums. Uh, we'll do some basics on writing a melody. But most of that really fun stuff is gonna come down the road in future sessions. And I'm gonna try and keep, keep every session down to about 15 minutes to keep it manageable so that you guys can learn and keep up and practice week over week. I'm gonna try and release one of these sessions every week, but this one will be a little bit longer just because it's the inaugural session. We've gotta learn how to navigate this, the uh, software, learn some of the important keyboard commands and shortcuts that will help save you time in the long run. All right, so thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps you out. Let's dive into the computer and see what we can learn. So this is what a blank new session looks like in Ableton Live. This is version 10 of the software. And I'm gonna be walking you through four important areas of the software that you've really got to learn and able to start effectively creating music. So one is this screen here, which is called the session view. Uh, the other, if you press tab to flip over, is called the arrangement view, where you can write out a song from left to right. And the third area is where you drop instruments and effects down in the effects chain or instrument chain and bank down here at the very bottom. And the fourth important area is of course your sound bank, which is your sound library here on the left where you can scroll through different sounds and load in other sample packs or sounds that you might have bought or downloaded. So going back to the session view, I'll take you through each of these areas in a bit of detail. So you can see that the session view is also your mixer view. So for every channel you have, you've got um, a strip here with the controls for it. So for example, Ableton gives you four by default when you open a new session. Two are MIDI channels and two are audio channels. And I can right click and I can make another uh, MIDI channel if I want. I can right click and make another audio track if I want, or I can just hit Command T, Apple T on an Apple computer. And so all of these will have uh, certain controls on them. If I zoom in there, you can see volume faders to bring the volume of that channel of sound up or down. Uh, you can pan the sound left or right using the balance knob. You can click channels on or off, or you can also solo a channel if it's the only channel that you'd like to hear at the moment. So MIDI channels are used to control MIDI instruments in the software. So that's uh, an instrument that comes built in with Ableton, for example, and you can also control a MIDI software using 
a uh, MIDI controller on your desk. That could be like a drum pad, or that could just be a little piano keyboard. That's a MIDI device that can control the notes of that instrument in the software. Whereas an audio channel, so these strips here, the audio channels are intended to actually record real audio that you're inputting through either a microphone if you're gonna sing, an electric guitar if you can plug it in through an audio interface. Over to the right, you have your master uh, channel strip, and you have the same controls there for the level, balance, and next to that, Ableton gives you two effects sends. By default, they're giving you re reverb and delay, and you can send those into your other channels by using the send knobs down here and allowing some of that reverb signal to affect your sound. And so, of course, we'll dive into using effects and sends in much more detail in future sessions. Now, a lot of people swear by the session view, which is what we're looking at right now in terms of actually writing and creating their music. Reason being is that they'll load different melodies and clips into these sections at the top, and uh, Ableton kind of lets you quickly bounce in between those and mix in those sounds with the other melodies and the neighboring strips and hear what sounds good together. So a lot of people think it's very good for the creative process. Uh, I think it's probably really been designed by Ableton for people who perform with Ableton for a live performance when they're gonna play a you know a, a live set where they're not actually DJing on turntables, but the set kind of sounds like, like that and they're, they're able to mix in and out the sounds as they transition from one song into another. Um, but people use it to kind of have a little jam session and build up the sounds before they actually go to the arrangement view and write out the song. That said, I'll press tab to flip over to the arrangement view because I, I really prefer the arrangement view Maybe it's because I'm a bit more of a uh, visual person. I like to see the song develop from left to right. It reads like a book, and you can see where the breaks are. You can see where the you know the buildups and the drops are, and I, I really prefer that. So um, the way you would set this up, I like to kind of start from scratch and think about you know what kind of song I'm going to be making and decide what I'm going to layer up first. Normally, I'm working on the drums first, so I'll normally make this channel here the, the first MIDI channel. I'm going to be using a built-in bass from the software, which I usually am. You can rename that by right-clicking or, or just hit Command-R. And now you can label that however you like. So I'll normally label that kick. So then you've got to find some sound. So I'll just show you how to start loading in instruments and sound. So in this case, for a kick, we need to go into the instruments section over here. And we need to find the drum rack. So we'll double-click that. And now you see the drum rack has appeared down here. And all of these little squares are areas where you can deposit a different drum sound. It can be a hi-hat, a snare drum, whatever you like. So in our case, we're looking for a kick. So we'll go into sounds. Or sorry, we need to stay in drums rather. Under drum hits, we can expand and hear the kicks. And this applies to all sounds in Ableton in the sound library, not just to drums. When you highlight it, you'll get a preview of the sound. You can see a little waveform down here playing across. And if you find that these are a little bit loud relative to everything else you're working on, which is usually the case, and it kind of can blow up your ears, come over, over down here to the right, and this blue meter here is the sound of that preview. So if you click your mouse and drag it down, you can reduce the volume level. So I'll leave that at minus 5 dB. All right, so if I like that kick, let's go for that one. You can drag and drop it onto one of these little squares down here. And now you'll see the waveform for that kick appear. And you, when you press play on that sound, you'll see the waveform play. You can even shorten that waveform if you want it to be a little bit more of a tighter staccato kick. I like that. So I'll leave that alone and come up here to write the kick in. And you can do that. Say I want to write in uh, just one measure for now. Just highlight one section, hold down con Command Shift and then M, and it'll write in a little marker. If you want to zoom in on the area you're working on, get that magnifying glass by hovering right up here, and then drag your mouse down, and it's going to expand for you. Down here is what we call the piano roll. In this case, it's actually just displaying the drums because we're working on a drum. And if you want to hear a, a preview of that kick, when you click on it here, you need to firstly illuminate this little head, headphone icon blue. You'll see now you hear that when you click on the side. You'll also hear it with that blue headphone illuminated when you double click to write in a note. So I can either double click with the mouse and then drag it to the length I want it, 
Or I can come up here in the top right and I can select this little pen tool and I can draw in all the kicks. That's gonna draw in one on every note I hover over. Or if I hold down the command key, then it lets me draw in for the length that I want. I don't work with that pen tool too often. With drums, it's pretty easy, so I tend to just draw in my kick, draw in another one here. If we're gonna be doing this in 4-4 time for an electronic piece of music, it's going to be the four to the floor beat. And I'll just, you can also use the zoom tool here to zoom in or out, by the way. And I'll just highlight these two measures and duplicate this again by hitting Command D, so I don't have to do the work, it'll do it for me. And then if you hit spacebar, it's gonna play with what you've written so far. Spacebar again will stop it. And if you hit spacebar again, it'll again start from the stop uh, from the beginning, from wherever you've made your left your cursor up here in the arrangement view. One thing that's a bit annoying is, for example, if I put in the piano roll, if I click my cursor here and press spacebar, it still plays from the beginning from wherever you've left it on the actual arrangement view up here. There's a workaround for this. It's a bit hard to find, but if you hover your mouse right about here, let me zoom in for you. If you hover your mouse here and get that little speaker icon, then click on your mouse, it'll play from exactly where you've left your mouse. All right, if you wanna to toggle the piano view or the piano roll on or off, you just uh, press shift and tab together and it'll go away. To bring it back, same thing, or you can double click in your marker up here where you've written the section of music in. But up here you can also copy and paste and duplicate very easily. So if I wanna, if I'm happy with this kick, I can just highlight that and hit Command D and it's gonna duplicate it however many times I like. If you wanna join these sessions, these sections all together into one, highlight them all. You can do that by dragging the mouse across or holding Shift and clicking them all. Then just hit Command J and they'll join all into one clip. Now to set up an actual drum rack, there's some production reasons why it's good to have your kick separate from your drums. So ordinarily, I'll put another uh, MIDI uh, channel down here. I'll go and get a new drum rack, put it on that channel again. You can do that either by just double clicking when you're highlighting on this channel, or you can drag and drop and put it onto that, the channel that you want. So then I'd go back in and find some more uh, drum sounds. I'll get a hi-hat drag that, that down into the drum rack. Maybe we need to find a clap. Okay, that'll do. And with these clustered together in one sound bank for the drum rack down here, note that you can highlight and click on these to bring their waveform up and then you can work on them. So right now, you can press play to hear the hi-hat. Okay, so say I want that a little louder. I can adjust the volume down here. I can also adjust the velocity, which is the sort of strength of the impact on the hi-hat. The volume of the clap sounds okay, so I'll leave that alone. But suppose I wanna add some reverb on that. So let's go up into audio effects. You find the effect that you want. In this case, we want reverb. I can just double click it or I can drag and drop it and now when I come to the clap and I press play to sample it, you'll hear the reverb has been added. Uh, if I turn that reverb off by clicking this yellow dot off, now it's dry again, there's no reverb. So I'll leave that on, but look what happens when I go and test the hi-hat too. You can hear that the reverb is also affecting the hi-hat. Reason being is that uh, this reverb is now being made to apply to the entire drum rack. So if you want it to apply to only one sound, of your drum chain, you need to highlight that sound, click on it, and then drag the reverb device into this little line that's here at the end of the drum rack. And now you'll see we have reverb on the clap, but we don't have any reverb on the hi-hat. Perfect. So if we want to write some of these in, again, let's highlight up here to insert a marker, shift command M, and by the way, you can make this any color you like. I prefer, uh, prefer to use standardized colors so that when I'm working on numerous different tracks, it's easy to keep track of if you're kind of a color coding type of person. So I always make my kick white. 
And then if you go down, right click and come down to assign track color to clips, it's gonna make white any other of the notes and uh, markers that I've already added over here. So I'll drum rack, I'll leave that green, that's fine. So if we wanna write in some hi-hats and claps now, let's just highlight across here for four measures worth. Hit Shift Command M and the new marker is drawn in. And then we can come down here. Again, the previews work because the blue uh, headphone is highlighted. Let's do the hi-hat first. Maybe we go for 16th notes. Oop, that's off. You can highlight these together and move them together using the arrows on your keyboard. That's better. And then I can just duplicate this by highlighting all of them at once and hitting Command D. But note that you do have to highlight the last blank note too to get the full measure, if you, like so. If you don't do that, and I'm hitting just Command Z to undo anything that works like any software does. If you don't do that, what you'll see will happen, say I highlight from one to four on those notes, and then I hit Command D, you'll see that they don't stagger over to the right spot where they should really be over here. Okay, let's add the clap now. Add it on uh, the two downbeats. And then you can also duplicate both drums at once in the same way as you would do a single. Just duplicate that all the way across. So now we have four measures of kick and four measures of the hi-hat and, and the clap as well. Okay, so those are the basics of setting up your drums. Uh, obviously there's a bit more to it than that, but that gets you going in terms of creating a basic groove. Now let's say we're gonna add a bass line. So I'll show you how to write in actual notes of a melody. So let's get a new MIDI track, and let's go and look for an instrument that has good bass sounds. The operator synth is a good one, I like those. Just double click that and the instrument is going to appear down here and you'll see that the red record light is on by default if you click that off you're not going to be able to record if you're using a MIDI controller so if you do want to program in your own notes by recording manually with a MIDI controller make sure that red record button is on and for recording uh, it's nice to have a metronome the metronome feature in Ableton is right up here if you turn that on, now when I play the music, or even if I don't play any music and I just let the uh, music run even though there's silence in my track, you'll hear the metronome bopping away. Same over here. I'll leave that off for now. When you press record, Ableton will give you a default metronome for the first four beats to count you in before it actually starts recording. Very handy, so watch. If I press record up there, now it starts recording. One very handy feature about Ableton is that you're able to assign your own keyboard shortcuts. The way you do that is hitting Command K on a Mac, and you're gonna see that everything that's assignable gets highlighted in orange, and there's many different parameters that you can control. So one thing I always like to do when I'm setting up a new track is to select the record button and then press R on your keyboard and you'll see that it's appeared over here on the left and then just hit Command K again to exit out of that. And now when I press record, if I just press R on the keyboard with my left hand, it counts me in and then it'll start recording. That's really handy if you have your right hand over the keyboard on your MIDI controller ready to play some notes that you've already worked out and you don't wanna lose track of which notes you need to start with. So there's basically two ways of inputting notes in Ableton. One is you can draw them in manually and you can again double click just like with the drums. Drag them to the length you want and make your melody that way. That can be quite time consuming as you can see. And if you already know how to kind of noodle around on a piano, 
and you have a MIDI controller, which I re would recommend using, you can get an entry level one for probably 75 bucks. Uh, it makes your life a lot easier and saves you a lot of time in Ableton instead of just writing everything in manually by hand, like I just showed you. So if you're gonna use a MIDI controller, all you need to do is make sure that the MIDI controller is controlling things properly. So here you can hear the, you can hear the bass. We can even get rid of this block and we can just get ready to write something in. So we'll sort of work out the melody that we want to do first. Okay, and then I'll hit record and it'll count me in. And we can stop it by hitting spacebar. And we can come and see what we've got here by double clicking. We'll bring up the piano roll. Let's listen back. All right, what you can notice by looking at this is that my timing is a little bit off. So the way to correct that using the power of uh, the software is hit command A to select all of the notes and then hit command U. That's gonna trigger the quantize feature which is going to snap the notes to the grid. And it doesn't always do it perfectly if your timing was really off, if you're a bad piano player like me. So you can see that some of these notes maybe aren't in the right place, but let's listen back and hear what it's done for us. Okay, so it only kind of partially got it, but we can just drag those to fix them ourselves. Here, that was supposed to be there. That note is late, you can hear that. Something like that, you can see I've screwed up the end. There you go. If you're happy with that and you want to duplicate it, just watch that your clip is in the correct area. There you go. And then you can duplicate that. Now, if you want to adjust the volume levels on these, say the kick needs to be a bit louder, we can come down here to that drum rack with the kick boost that up a little. If we think that uh, hi-hat sounds a little bit too dry, maybe we add a little bit of reverb on that hi-hat too. So again, come back to audio effects, drag the reverb in and put it only in between that line where it's only gonna apply to that hi-hat. Press S on the keyboard to hear only that channel of drums, and then S on here to hear only that hi-hat. Maybe I want that to sound even more washed out with even more reverb. I'll turn up the dry wet, which controls the amount of the reverb signal, and the decay time, which, as you can hear, prolongs the amount of the reverb. Press S to take, or sorry, the solo of the track away, and S up here to bring back the other channels. If you want this to keep repeating on loop while you continue working on it, just highlight that section and you can come up here and press on this little loop button or you can just hit uh, Apple L. and You'll turn a loop on or off. So now it's on, you can see at the end, it'll continue playing. So what you can see as we've gone through this is that there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts in Ableton that can really help save you time and make your life a lot easier. They can be a little bit tedious to learn at the beginning, but they are really worth it and you're gonna thank yourself in the long run. So I'm gonna post a list of my favorite shortcuts that I use the most in the description of this video below. And I do recommend focusing on those and just trying to get them down to memory over your first couple of sessions. Trust me, it will save you a lot of time in the long run. I'll just pull up a track that I finished now so you can see how easy it is to navigate with the shortcuts.
Okay, so here we are in a finished track of mine, and I'll just show you the mixer view. When the song is playing, you can see all the levels bouncing away. I've separated out the drums here while they're in a they're in a group, but they each have their own volume level. Back in the arrangement view, you can see if I want to hear, say, only the bass, I just click that, hit the S on the keyboard, and then I just hear the bass alone. If I want to see all the automations and go into automation mode, just press A. Those are the red lines that change on the different sounds. Automation is used to control and make uh, your audio effects do dynamic things and change throughout the song to manipulate the sound. I'll obviously be doing an in-depth session on automation at some point going forward. Again, if you want to see the notes, tab shift brings up your camp piano roll. Press it again to take it away. Again, if you want to duplicate something, command D. Or if you want to copy and paste, that's the same as any software. Command X is cut, and then Command V is paste. We talked about quantizing notes by doing a select all, and then Command U. You'll see those just shifted because the computer thinks I want to do something else with those notes. Command R to rename a, uh, rename a channel to something else. Command Z to undo that. You can also collapse your channels by clicking on these little arrows if you need to see something else and you have a lot of sounds piled up. So uh, basically that's navigating the software and those are the four important areas. Uh, one last thing to note is the speed of the track is controlled up here in the top left corner. Default in Ableton is 120 BPM when you open a new session. You can see I've remade this to 123. You would just type that in. Um, most electronic music is kind of in the range of, I'd say, 116 beats per minute up to around 130 beats per minute for some faster techno. And uh, one quick comment on the effects chain down here. I just want to let you know that this reads from left to right. So if you put, say, a reverb here, let me double click that, and a delay here as well, this effects chain reads like a book left to right. So the delay is gonna go on top of the reverb. Whereas if I switch these around, now you're gonna get delay on the basic notes from the actual sound. It's gonna be subject to this equalizer first where I've dipped the low end frequency a little bit there. You can see that. Then it's gonna have the delay. And then the reverb's gonna go on top of all of that affected sound. So just something to keep in mind. And we'll go into these uh, audio effects in a great deal more uh, detail uh, later on in a future session. So, all right, guys, that is a basic overview of the four main sections of the software that you've got to understand in order to start creating music. So uh, I hope that's been helpful to get you started from scratch with your first time in Ableton. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here for the next session.